In the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, which lasted from 1918 until 1941, Bosnia lost the status it had as a corpus separatum, or to use a modern term, a third entity or condominium of the dualist Austro-Hungarian monarchy. The legal continuity with the former state of affairs was abolished, and from 1929, Bosnia was administratively blended with neighbouring non-Bosnian territories. The political life in the first Yugoslavia unfolded above all in the struggles between the unitarists and federalists, who also did not intercede on behalf of the separate status of Bosnia. The unitarist concept of state was implemented as a political practice until 1939. From the Croatian-Serbian agreement of the 26th of August 1939 until the collapse of the First Yugoslavia in 1941, the concept of the three-member federation, founded on the Serbs, Croats and Slovenes as nations on defined territories, the Croatian Banovina, the Drava Banovina or Slovenia, and the so-called Serbian lands, was briefly implemented. Bosnia was divided between Serbs and Croats, while the Bosnian Muslims remained unrecognized as a separate ethnic group. This was the result of a few confluent elements, one of them being the death of Bosnian leader, Mehmed Spaho, who led the dominant Bosnian Muslim political party, Yugoslav Muslim Organization, which frequently switched sides during two decades in effort to preserve Muslim autonomy and class positions of the remnants of Bosnian Muslim Ottoman-derived aristocracy. The political life of the Bosnian Croats in the first Yugoslavia flowed in an intensive communication with Croats in Dalmatia and Slavonia, chiefly through the Croatian Peasant Party as the dominant Croatian political organization. The main bearer of cultural development was the Croatian Cultural Society Napredak, which was founded in Sarajevo in 1904 and became the Society of All Bosnian and Herzegovinian Croats in 1907. In the first Yugoslavia, Napredak extended its educational and social activities amongst Croats outside of Bosnia and represented the main force in the cultural life of the Croats in the same way that the Croatian Peasant Party was the main force in political life. After the fall of the first Yugoslavia and the establishment of the Croatian state that lasted from 1941 till 1945, in which Bosnia found itself as a component part, the leading role in the creation of the political and cultural reality during the Second World War, fell into the hands of Serb royalist Chetniks, Croat Ustasha and also communist organizations. The communists emerged as the victors out of this bloody war, which left hundreds of thousands of victims and deep traumas. They succeeded in displacing the former civic culture, political parties, and cultural associations, and, also, establishing the Second Yugoslavia, that lasted until 1991, as a communist one-party federal state, in which Bosnia received the status of one of the six federal republics. Contemporary historiography is only at its beginnings in its efforts to reconstruct a more or less objective picture of this very complex period, because both sides, anti-communist or fascist, and communist, committed crimes which are very difficult to face openly. The communists, and their descendants, have great difficulty recognizing that the communists committed mass crimes against their enemies and ideological opponents, during, and immediately after the final military operations. They probably committed more crimes, numerically speaking, than the fascists or anti-communists against members of the Croatian nation, albeit with different motives and consequences. For that reason, the undertaking of measures that intend not to juxtapose Bleiberg and marches of death, as a metaphor of communist crimes, and Yasenovots, as a metaphor of Eustasha crimes, can only be counterproductive for historical science. It is true, to be sure, that Yasenovots and Bleiberg are not the same, as Yvo Goldstein, 
and Slavko Goldstein point out, but their comparison is unavoidable if historical memory is to obtain its actual context and anchorage in truth, in place of tempting and untruthful slogans, according to which only the fascists or anti-communists fought, on the side of evil, while their opponents, the communists, exclusively on the side of good. Power in Yugoslavia after 1945 was distributed according to the aforementioned mainstream perception of victims on the partisan side, while victims on the anti-communist side were neglected. Additionally, participation in the war on the partisan side was also a factor that influenced the distribution of power in Yugoslavia. The first anti-fascist or communist partisan detachment, composed of Croats, is associated with June 22, 1941, in Sisak, Croatia. This date marks Germany's attack on the Soviet Union. The organizers of the uprising in 1941, and among the Serbian population in the beginning, a good, and surprisingly large part, were Croats in all parts of Croatia and Bosnia. Josip Broz Tito gave, in mid-1944, Speaking about the ethnic composition of his army, data on 44% Serbs, 30% Croats, etc. Serbs made up about 41% of the population in the area of Yugoslavia, and in the partisan units 44%, while, Croats with about 23% of the population, 30%. Of three army generals with some general rank obtained during the war until 1945, all three were national Croats. There were the most Croats in all units that led serious military offensive operations in 1944 until 1945, Batina, Mostar, Kanin, Rijeka, Trieste, except in the cases of Belgrade and Sarajevo. In the fateful negotiations on the future of Yugoslavia after the war, the negotiators from the partisan side were Croats Josip Broz and Vladimir Bakarich, and from the royalist Yevon Shabashic, ban of Croatia. But, Croats from Bosnia and especially Herzegovina, did not fight on the communist side in significant numbers, and were overrepresented in the Axis units, so, after the end of war, they suffered disproportionately. Bosnian Croats were especially stigmatized, as a reactionary, potentially fascist people, and were subjected to repression of all sorts, spanning from physical liquidation, arrests of Catholic clergy, to planned economic impoverishment of Croatian areas in Bosnia, that forced local Croats to emigrate and to the process of the cultural decroatization. All this was possible, only because of the totalitarian nature of communist regime, which softened somewhat during the 1970s, but essentially remained the same until the collapse in 1991. On November 25, 1943, in Bosnia, the top political organization of the Partisans, Territorial Anti-Fascist Council of People's Liberation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, declared that Bosnia and Herzegovina belonged to the Croatians, the Muslims, and the Serbians, emphasizing its multinational composition rather than being one nation and one state, like Croatia and Serbia. It is interesting to note that out of the 93 generals in the independent state of Croatia, 13 were Orthodox, including Juro Gru Ich, who held the highest military rank. Additionally, some Chitniks were also enlisted in the service of the independent state of Croatia. Services of the independent state of Croatia saved the lives of American pilots in one occasion, and, on the other occasion, Chitniks saved other group of American pilots. All of these facts contribute to a complex and difficult to understand picture, as opposed to the simplified mainstream narrative during communist Yugoslavia. Croats were, during the Second World War, the nation that was, among Yugoslav peoples, more under arms, on both sides, in comparison with the rest, and, somewhat more so on the side of the Croatian state, although that changed over time. With the communist move from 1944, which equalized in the moral and political sense Croatian home guards and Chetniks, with an invitation to join the partisans, while they still can, and excluded the Ustashas and condemned them to extermination, 
a monstrous historical act was committed and resulted in mass atrocities, since Chitniks, as the dirtiest military organization on the ground of the past, and the future Yugoslavia, with a history of genocide, since the period before the First World War, and mass crimes against Albanians, Muslims, Macedonians, Croats, and in the tragedy of the Second World War, with the similar genocidal intentions as the Ustasha, were in fact mostly amnestied only because of Yugoslav orientation, even in the greater Serbian cutthroat garb. Political regime and military forces of the independent state of Croatia were consistently against the renewal of Yugoslavia, which was based on the negative experience from the first Yugoslavia. Regarding culture in partisans, Croats created the only culture worth mentioning. The most prominent artists in the partisans were Croats, or Croatian Serbs, identified with Croatian culture. In short, bearing in mind the aforementioned observations on the crimes that were built into the foundations not only of the Croatia during the Second World War, but also Tito's Yugoslavia, for at the time of establishing their rule, the communists squared accounts with their enemies and ideological opponents in a bloody and brutal manner and on a mass scale. Only after this had occurred did their state employ milder forms of oppression and never developed into a democratic state. In the following content, we will give some notations focusing on the political and cultural conditions of the Bosnian and Herzegovinian Croats in the Communist Socialist Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and after the collapse of Yugoslavia in so-called Dayton Bosnia and Herzegovina. Three facts influenced, in various ways, the cultural development of the ethnic groups in Bosnia, Muslims or today's Bosniaks, Croats and Serbs under communist rule. First, the status of Bosnia as a federal republic. Second, Tito and Stalin breakup in 1948 and the political link-up with the so-called Third World to which the majority of Islamic countries belonged. Third, the linguistic policy of Serbo-Croatism, with its explicit predominance of the Serbian language over the Croatian. These three facts taken together, influenced the favorable development of the Bosnian Muslims into a modern nation at the end of the 20th century, namely, the republican status of Bosnia removed the potential Croatian and real Serbian pressure to which the Muslims had been exposed to in the first Yugoslavia. Tito's political association with the Islamic world opened the possibility of the cultivation of the Islamic cultural identity, and the Serbo-Croatism that was consistently implemented was wholeheartedly accepted by the Islamic religious press. Therefore, it is not surprising that the Bosniaks or Muslims in today's Bosnia are constructing their modern linguistic standard on a Serbo-Croatian basis, while one can observe a reinforced Serbianization among the Bosnian Serbs and a return to Croatian linguistic traditions among the Croats. Though the Croatian-Serbian agreement from 1939 brought the Greater Serbian Project into question and was nominally kept at bay in the Second Yugoslavia, a latent Serbianization of the linguistic culture in the educational system and public life was nevertheless implemented. The cultural contacts between Bosnian and Herzegovinian Croats with the Socialist Republic of Croatia were admittedly not rendered impossible, but they were made ever more difficult. The Croatist linguistic policies of the Croatian state during the Second World War was used as an excuse to declare all specifically Croatian language traits as an Astasha language and therefore their use was prevented. The practical consequence of such a situation was that the language of the Bosnian Croats, who were schooled in Bosnia and published their texts in Sarajevo and other Bosnian towns, was considerably Serbianized. 
Only the organizations of the Catholic Church successfully resisted Serbianization in their professional work and press and tacitly followed the linguistic processes in the Republic of Croatia. The most important Croatian linguists and lexicographers with roots in Bosnia, Dalibor Brozovic and Tomislav Ladan, could not influence the official language policy in Bosnia and Herzegovina.